Hey you guys, welcome back. So today we're going to do a bit of an upgrade on the 3D printer, but first, uh, this place is a wreck, so let's clean it. You know, this is starting to look like a bit of a pattern, but all we can do is clean. Okay, now that we got that mess taken care of, let's take a look at the 3D printer. It's printing pretty good right now, but I think we can do better. So let's take a closer look and I'll show you what I have planned. First problem I want to deal with is this play. Uh, that problem is being caused right here from these ball joints. So I got some new ones and a new way to install them that I think will improve that play quite a bit. Uh, the second problem I want to fix is a little less obvious. Well, first this play gets exaggerated because the point of rotation is here and the nozzle is here and that distance exaggerates that play. So we can reduce that just by bringing the nozzle up, uh, which is going to solve our second problem, uh, which is of cooling. Now this uh, 3D printer has three fans. Uh, this one is to cool the hot end so that that heat doesn't travel up into the end effector. Uh, but it also has two other fans here uh, and here, and that actually cools the part as it's printing. Now, most times when you print PLA especially, uh, you'll have some warping problems uh, if you don't cool as you print. Um, but you want it kind of localized, because if you're cooling the whole area, it tends to uh, peel off the bed. Uh, let's jump to a graphic real quick and I'll show you more of what I'm talking about. Okay, here's a quick representation of a 3D printer printing. As the extruded filament cools, it tends to shrink. If there's nothing holding it in place, it can warp your print. This is especially problematic on overhangs. This can be solved to some extent by cooling the filament right after it gets extruded. However, too much cooling can be a problem too. If the difference in temperature between the air and the extruded plastic is big enough, it can cause your whole print to peel up from the bed. There's two ways to solve this. First, uh, you want to localize the cooling to right next to the extruder. The second is to heat up the air around your 3D print. Uh, this is a bit more difficult and a problem we'll try and tackle in next week's episode. Okay, hopefully that made it a little more clear. Um, so to try and fix some of these problems, I'm actually gonna move this whole assembly up uh, and put the fans up here instead and duct them down into the 3D print. That's gonna give us a more localized cooling effect, which is gonna be better overall. And it's also gonna uh, kind of center our mass. So two birds with one stone, let's do it. Okay, let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about with these ball joints. So uh, this is a bad one, it's, it's pretty loose. If you wiggle it back and forth, maybe you can hear that ticking. This just got a tiny bit of play in it, and that play over uh, the six arms adds up to enough to make a difference in the 3D print. What you want is for them to be more like this. See, if I set this in place, it just stays in position. You can't wobble it out of position. It feels stiff. So I want one is uh, as difficult to move as possible. That's gonna take out the play. All right, so these are the ball joints I ordered. Uh, they're pretty cheap. They're like, uh, I don't know, a dollar a piece or something. I think you get 12 for 12 bucks or so. But the, the big downside with these is they come disassembled. So you've gotta get this ball into here. Now when I first did this, uh, I just took a pair of pliers and I squeezed them together. Uh, that's probably causing all the problems I'm having. So to prevent that, uh, let me show you what I'm planning on doing here. I'm going to stick the ball ends in some boiling water. Uh, this is going to cause the plastic to expand ever so slightly. The ball joints I've got in the freezer going to contract them ever so slightly, and that should make this job a lot easier. Okay, so you see that shiny side? That's the side that we're going to insert the ball from. Matte side, shiny side. All right, that's pretty good. These are the stiffest, those are totally usable. These are probably just fine, but uh, just a little bit softer. And these I probably won't use. That's why I bought twice as many as I need. 
Okay, I got all of the uh, ball joints off. Uh, so now I can replace them with the good ones, but uh, these have to be all exactly the same length. Uh, the separation between the center and the center. So that's gonna be my master. And all I have to do is match all of these to be exactly the same. Awesome, yeah, these turned out perfect. But that's gonna do it for this episode. Stick around next week when we put this thing back together and we build a hot end from scratch. And I'm talking totally from scratch. It's gonna be sweet. Check it out. See you next week. <laughs>